Hello, welcome at this presentation on PLC Open Safety, where I will show you why this is beneficial for you. My name is Ilko van der Wall, and I'm the managing director of the organization called PLC Open, and I will guide you through this presentation. PLC Open Safety is a natural addition to the logic and motion. If we start moving, we got to think about personal safety. There are many reasons to merge these environments. First of all, there were far too many dialects and far too many standards. We got all kinds of governmental requirements and probably most important, there was no independent training material due to all these different dialects. We were talking about the same, but everybody had different words for it and different meaning. And there is a trend to software solution. So we want to help the machine builder to get this work done faster better and cheaper. Safety is a changing environment, and I will give you a short overview. First of all, let's look at a classical machine. You had one motor with one drive and mechanical linkings to all the functionalities that it should have. Nowadays, we see, of course, a control solution where you see multiple drives and multiple motors, and they are controlled by software. If we look to the classical design, you had one motor, one drive, and that means you could hardwire easily your emergency button, for instance, your safety part. But with this change to multiple drives, you will see that you will link these functionalities with a network. And this was the first step. You had your PLC controller doing your drives, and you had your safety controller guiding that part. Of course, the networks got integrated. That was the first step. And what you saw too is that the safety controller is now part of the PLC controller, in many cases in the machine building industry. The next step, of course, is that you add your programming and configuration tool also for safety into the same development environment. And with this, you can add additional functionalities very easily into your whole network. The next step will be that we really move the position and velocities of the different drives and motor combinations into the system. So we will be able to do a different kind of safety control, but we are not yet there. We need faster networks for that one. So why integrating the safety functionality? The big part is, of course, it is the basis for easier commissioning. That means you save money, you save time. That's a good starting point. But also, by standardizing the nomenclature, we can do independent training on safety. And that helps. That is a better linkage between the training institutes, or the educational part, and what you will use in practice. Support for safe programming techniques, Guidelines for the uses of the IEC standard, there are many standards, and map those to function blocks, a library of function blocks, and we use a safe bool data type to quickly show what is a safe function block. The goal is to allow users to achieve functional safety at the machine and plant level. We are more focused to machine level, however, it will be able on plant level too. Overall, there are requirements that are related to safety. These are very generic. The distinction between safety and non-safety functionalities, use of applicable programming languages and languages subsets, use of validation software blocks, use of applicable programming guidelines, use of recognized error-reducing measures for the life cycle of the safety-related software. These are very generic high-level functionalities in that sense. So we took those and created a suite of specifications. Part one till part four, and I will explain here what that's in it, and a separate one for safe motion. And I will have a slide on that one too. So what is included overall in all these safety specifications? A representation of the software architecture, definition of the programming languages, definition of the language subset, and of safety-related data types. And for easy programming, we have identified user levels. We have defined an error handling and diagnostic concept, definition of generic safety related function block and a whole suite, a whole library of function blocks, and how to comply to this one. 
First step is the architectural model. You have your inputs and outputs for standards and for safety environments. And you have your safety application running there and you have your functional application running there. Now it's easy to get data of the status, for instance, out of the safety application into the functional application. But how you have to, you have to be very careful to send data back. It can perhaps be a reset, but you have to make sure that you have safe data there, safe information. Next step was the definition of user levels. You see here that you have your function block libraries and combined with your programming environment, at the basic level, you use those that are validated, and you can very easily build your safety application. Now, if you want a little bit more, you need functionality like not or timer off. In your program, you can use an extended level to make sure that you add to the specific library, get them validated, and certified, far easier in this case, because you are very close to the whole environment. And with that one, you can go back to basic level and do your programming. The function blocks itself, let's say the basics, you can do in any language in that sense, but you have to go to a validation and certification procedure. Normally your supplier will give you the libraries. And, but if you are a supplier, you have to create those. And that's where these languages come in. That you can think of C++, for instance. You can do anything. Basic level is oriented to function block diagram and letter diagram, the graphical languages. And an extended level, we add ST to that one. So we are looking to create very easily the safety application. And we do that with a limited variability language. The embedded software firmware operating system, the libraries itself, you can create with any other language in that sense. So within these development environment, we want to create a limited variable language. So we reduce the number of data types, we reduce the functionalities, and we reduce the programming languages. Like said, letter diagram, function block diagram, and an ST for the extended. And based on that one, we created a whole suite, a whole library of function blocks. Emergency stop, safe stop, category one, category two, safety limited speed, safety monitoring, all kinds of others. Sequential muting, parallel muting, external device monitoring, out control, a whole suite. And for all these function blocks, separately, we defined the applicable safety standards, the interface description, functional description, including a state diagram and typical timing diagrams, error detection, error behavior, and function block specific error and status codes. Now, how does that look? If we look, for instance, to an emergency stop, you see, first step, these are the relevant safety standards. This is what we map into the functionality of the emergency stop. This is a part of the interface description. You see the name, of course, on top. You see a description of what it does. You see the inputs, the data types coupled to it, the initial values, and a description of that one. And this is the graphical representation of such a function block. On the left, you see the inputs with the names and the data type. And on the right, you see the, the outputs with the names and data types. And on top, you see the name SF for safety emergency stop. This is a typical timing diagram. So you see the inputs, you see the outputs, you see a certain behavior there. And what is, of course, important is where you get your e-stop e out, where you are safe. And these are the safety demand, the reset request, and there you see the behavior that it gets done. And when e-stop in falls, then, of course, this falls too. On the bottom, you see the DR codes. Those describe the state where the function block is in. And in this example, start reset is false. Typical timing diagram. We got several per function block. And the next one, of course, is the state diagram. So this is the whole state diagram for the emergency stop. Now, if we zoom in, we'll see on top that you put the power on, you activate the function block. So you get from ready as false to ready as true. And you get into this init state, 8001. And from that one, you got three arrows to go out of it. 
three possibilities depending on start reset depending on what your start reset is in the end you want to go to the bottom safety output enabled where e stop out is true you are in a safe condition and you see that this reset errors here is a short representation of what's really going on there but once you know that it's easier to check the function block specific error and status codes you see again these are the dir codes this is the state where it is this is the name of the state and this is then the the status of the the inputs and outputs there now how do you use this and we add of course a short example of the usage so this is let's say a small program around the emergency stop the safety part is on top and on the bottom are the normal function blocks they should perhaps not be yellow but in this case they are i see now so if we zoom in you see the emergency stop and when e stop out is there then you have in this case you have two axes axis one and axis two and you have two safe stops however you see from the monitoring times that you only do those if the bottom does not work so you start with a normal MC stop, PLC open motion control stop on the axis. And if that does not work within one second, then the whole safety procedure starts. I showed you a reset behavior. We originally did that with a rising edge and with ISO 13849, you see that we have more options, a rising edge, falling edge and a detection with rising edge and falling edge. So the original version 1.0 we could take and implement this what we call backward compatibility and implement it in version 2.0 so don't be afraid it is there in part three we added some additional function blocks and in part four we went into an application specific area in this case for presses in many cases metal presses and press can be relatively large. Think about parts for your car, pressing the metals for your door or your roof or your bonnet. So you see here the front side where you can have two persons standing there with two emergency out and two two hand controls. They can put the material in and you can configure it in such a way that on the back there can be two people too that can take it out. And this is the whole panel to do the configuration for the specific dispress. And in order to do that, we need a whole set of function blocks. Some of them we already had defined. So that's what you see here as the generic ones. And some of them we had to do in part four. Those are the add-ons, the camshaft monitor, the double valve monitoring for the hydraulic specific for presses, although usable in other areas too. Next to that one, we had the last specification called safe motion and in motion you have now the whole set of definitions there i show you safe stop one safe stop two for basic function blocks but you get many more functionalities and we didn't want to make them all into a different function block because in principle they are doing the same so what we decided is to use the safety request function blocks and by adding the right names, we can link that to the inputs and the outputs. So link all these functionalities in a more naming convention set and data type convention set, all mapped to the same function block safety request. As I showed you, safety is the addition to logic and motion. And that is what PLC Open does as the basis. Logic Motion Safety provides structuring, decomposition, the basis for reuse and less training. And on top of that one, we add communication via OPCOA, exchange on XML, and we do training. We give guidelines for training. And with that one, we want to make sure that our tagline for efficiency and automation is really valid for you, that it helps you to become more efficient. And for that one, we need you too, of course. We need your feedback. We need your input. We need your work. So please join our organization and make sure that you support this part. For more information, check our website 
plcopen.org. There is an electronic newsletter where you can subscribe to. You get it four or five times a year. And if you want to reach me in person, this is my email address. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Keep in touch because there will be more movies or more themes. Thank you. That's all. Bye for now.